Yeah. As you can see, I was imitating this stick figure here. So my name is Jurek. Hello. Uh, I work as a business development director at Motley, as you said. And basically it means that I help basically big Finnish companies to understand what's going to happen in the future from, from now to five to ten years and try to build different kind of projects to help them achieve position in this future. Whatever it is. So I do business consult consulting mainly. And my colleagues are usually strategists, uh, developers, designers, storytellers and service designers. So that's the unit with whom I'm working with. But uh, this is me and me somehow improved with help of with help of with help of artificial intelligence. I don't know if you know face app. That was the thing that stole your information and your face metrics and you are happy to use it. Mm, but that's unfortunately how it works. Uh, so as you can see, AI is a super handy tool for designers. Okay, now you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's really good. <clears throat> mm, actually, I got the background information that he should be design students from all the but then I heard like yesterday that they will be actually tech professionals from companies. <laughs> I don't know which you are, but I hope that you're going to enjoy this presentation because what I'm basically talking about is what interests me. And you're going to see it in the near future. Uh, the broad topic of this event is how to design for AI. I don't know who wrote the topic. Maybe it's AI itself, because somehow it sounds weird for me why we are designing for AI. I don't know. Maybe you, people are doing things for gods, people are doing things for money, but I don't know why we should design anything for AI. It's always super good to be polite, also towards robots, but still. Uh, maybe it's good to say my standpoint. Basically, uh, I'm generalist myself, so I'm going to speak on pretty general level. And for me, in this case, and in my daily life, AI basically means it includes in current technologies. Okay. And design for me means problem solving. And that's where I look at the world. Okay. Mm. I don't know if you waited to have an answer for these questions. For example, what is the latest AI library I should use? Will there be AI price and apocalypse? Uh, well, was Raptor's AI course any good? It was pretty okay. I recommend. Have you seen the video of sex robots? Of course not. And what's the difference of AI and machine learning? Actually, the last one is a joke, and the answer goes. AI is written on PowerPoint, in this case keynotes, and machine learning with Python. So, but I'm not speaking about any of this, basically. But instead of this, I'm going to show four of my friends. Maybe you have seen a few of them already. I'm going to give this presentation with great authors. I've basically only used books to build up this presentation. I'm going to have this presentation with uh, these four plus me great authors who I can call my friends. Except the one of them is a real person. Here is this gone picture generated with websites that create spaces that actually doesn't belong to anyone. Also, the backside of the Helsingin Sanomat this morning was one image created with the same NVIDIA software as well. I don't know if you know this. But other for we truly exist. May I present to you Leaves Ramquist, Mr. Harari, and Matt Haig. And I'm not basically going to give any answers to you, sorry. I'm just giving questions. And we are going to show you four philosophical, philosophical questions you should be interested in in the age of AI. General level. And I hope this provokes some ideas, maybe some thoughts, and would be nice to hear your questions, your ideas after this. So I'm trying to be fairly quick. 
Yuval Noah Harari is going to ask, are we going to the right direction? Author of Sapiens, Homo Deus. Uh, what's it, 21 lessons for the 21st century, right? Great books. Liv Strömqvist, Swedish uh, feminist comic book, book author. Uh, she's going to ask, do you understand who designed your algorithms? Uh, me? Uh, I'm going to ask, why should I keep asking why? You might think why I'm among these great authors. I haven't published anything, but I have interviewed one of the most popular Finnish AI authors while being drunk about AI, so that's my background. <laughs> and Matheik, he's going to ask how to control your fragile mind. And let's start with uh, Mr. Harare. <clears throat> uh, basically, Harare asks that, are we, going to, are we going to in the right direction in general? And in basically many metrics show that gonna, we as a humanity, we have developed. Extreme pro poverty rates have dropped down, which is super cool. Basic education increased. Uh, democracy somehow increased in a you know in a big picture and vac vaccination levels also increased but at the same time they are gonna somehow troubling trends for example less and less people own more and more of the wealth uh, and also this well fucking climate change which is somehow annoying because we should do business rights <laughs> but at the same time this all progress is somehow weirdly destroying this planet apparently and if we are because basically how AI is now used how people are using AI they are basically in many cases again there are lots of people who are doing extremely good job but in many cases, AI is used to boost existing businesses. And existing businesses apparently are killing this planet and also our minds. So, I don't know, maybe we should be somehow, that's something to take in account. And that's also my problem because I'm working with big Finnish companies. I'm trying to guide them towards future, also making them still I'm trying to make them profitable in the future as well, but also I'm trying to get little ideas how to maybe make the world a little bit better for the people and for the nature. Uh, after each of these questions, I'm going to give you get a lesson, or uh, I don't know if it's lesson, but maybe if this is the answer after the hardest questions, are we going to the right direction? Maybe you should ask this question again. So. If whatever you're doing with the AI or are planning to do with the AI, if the answer is fuck, we might not be doing the right thing in general. Maybe you should rethink and refocus where you should use your AI superpowers. Uh, for example, in my previous company that got bankrupted, uh, <laughs> as all cool startups does, right? I got, uh, I got, uh, I've done it now. But for example, we designed one a, somehow using light AI, but we created chatbots for the customer service use for the electric uh, store. I mean, what's, it's not the word. It's electronics store. And it worked pretty well. But what it actually does, it helps people buy more stuff. And I don't know what your standpoint is, but still, I can't help but feel that there's some trouble. There's, it's somehow troubling to help people to buy more. It's good if you can sleep your, if, if you can sleep your nights always super well, but this causes some troubles to me. Then, to the next question, Liv Strömqvist asks that who designs our algori algorithms. Who, have, who has read her comics? 
No one. Go and read it. Uh, here's the discussion with me and Liv. I said to Liv that, Jenna Liv, nice comics. She said, thanks Yuri, what did you learn? Me. That I most probably have stupid fears and expectations that affects negatively how I see the people and the world and how I act here. And how could you become better problem solver with this background? Well, maybe I should read more, be critical and change my own perspective. And that's exactly what we all should constantly do. For example, Liv has made extremely great comics about periods, vulva, and how basically men and mankind have problem, pro, uh, made, 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 for example, periods such a huge issue, basically without no good reason. And as we know from the examples, for example, with, uh, with this uh, case where black people were categorized as gorillas, or, or somehow Trump, uh, racist, angry, uh, Microsoft tweet bots, we see that basically systems, not only AI system, but, but also the, whatever project we are doing, they project our own biases. And because people are always biased, also machine learning will be. But if we stay crit critical towards our perceptions, we are able to build future system better than we have been built. And I think that's something we all should have and take account always when we are designing AK, solving any problem. Because what Liv extremely well uh, illustrates in her comic books is that how society's parents and the life events affect on how we work. It's of course annoying to figure it out, I have been wrong, but it's somehow good for others. And actually Harari, these aren't the actual words, but these share the meaning and share the idea of both Liv Strömpist, but also Yuval Harari says that we are basically highly functioning algorithms uh, we believe that we understand ourselves, but it seems that we are far from that. That's basically the same what that bearded for Star Wars fan said in the TED video, if you saw the reference links for the events. We have just started to understand how we work. So, after answering the question that do I know who designed my algorithms, why I have these ideas, why I have these thoughts, and if the answer is fuck, I might have pretty narrow minded, pretty narrow mindset, even though I feel that I don't have. Again, good moment to rethink. Oh, who's there? There's me. Uh, and me. Wow. Uh, why is super, super important to ask why? Uh, and I believe that we ask why so we can find the purpose on some level. Purpose meaning, yeah, yoga pictures and inspirational, you know, what's the wall? Wall posters, yeah. But I think purpose is somehow something more. Here I'm having this somehow boring discussion with myself. Yes, I'm asking about my, why. I say to me that it's a professional talk by myself. Why not? Because, well, you know, you need to be professional. That's why I have this CEO, Goat, who says that purpose is not a mere tagline of marketing campaign. It's a company's fundamental reason for being. And I think the more why questions you ask, the more closer you get the purpose, actually. So basically why this company is doing what it's doing, why this service is actually doing what we are doing, and for example, why we are even using AI for this case. These are always super relevant questions. For example, in the era of AI hype, it's super nice to have AI projects, but it's the actually really good reason to it. Uh, I think that asking why reminds us about why we are doing what we are doing, and, and then we are not doing AI for AI sake, for example, because of the deeper reasons and I believe that asking why questions also might give somehow help for finding your own meaning in your own place here. Because 
I don't know if you have ever felt any troubles with this modern working life. I have. I have struggled finding my place. I have struggled finding my meaning. And it can be fucking consuming. You know, for reals. So that's why Simon Sonic, thank you. You made this why, how, what, golden circle. That's actually, even though it's some level consult, consultants uh, thing, but it's still a really good tool to ask. And usually, AI itself is not on the center. In the center, there are other, other answers for the why questions. AI might be how, answer for the how, but not always. <coughs> So again, if you're saying, fuck, I might not have any proper reason to utilize AI but for the buzzword credits, then you're probably on the wrong track. Nodding, good. Uh, and for example, I've taken a few times part of uh, Finland's ministry projects where they have been thinking that how Finland can you know, become the super nation of AI. This has, I've been in the events where that, that has been the actual topic. <laughs> we need to find out how Finland can become the world leading uh, country relating to AI. Well, that's delusional. That's not possible. And even though it's possible, I think it's somehow ecocentric. Why Finland or any country should be the leading? Only from nas some, on some level of nationalistic perspective. But again, for general good, there's no reason that no company, no country should be the leading, leading force for any development of such a powerful technology as AI could be in the future. Last author, Matt Haig. Matt, my new spiritual leader. Despite all the depressing lessons, I still want to learn everything about AI because it's the future. You know that amount of all information is already flying in your head. Spending time in the nature would be a good alternative. But I want to stay relevant for the job markets. You know, I want to know a lot about artificial intelligence. So when I'm applying for the next job, I would seem valuable for the people, right? Maybe that, I don't know what's your reason, why you are interested in AI, but maybe you have heard that it's a skill of the future and you want to know it, so you can get a better job. It's, again, it's really good. But Matt would say, you need first remember that you're always good enough. You're always good. You're already good. You're a human being. You're able to think. You're able to ask questions. Why, 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 again? Maybe that's good. But if you want to get something out from the AI in order to improve your, your position in working world. Maybe it would be good to find something that actually interests you, that's actually somehow easy to learn. If coding is not your thing, maybe you can le learn more about AI ethics. And if you, if you don't care about AI ethics and you like coding, maybe that's the way. And if you're not interested in actually learning anything relating to AI, that's also actually super good because there are constantly new technological innovations and it's just impossible to learn everything. And why I'm saying this <clears throat> is maybe because, again, AI basically doesn't need any of us, but maybe my mom might need me, my neighbors might need me, maybe my <laughs> beloved ones might need me. And if somehow developing AI might help me to spend time with my beloved ones, well, then it's good. And I say this because, again, in my previous life, I was pretty interested in AI. I read pretty much. And for a brief moment, at least, I thought that I could be able, if I really put time and effort on it, I could become the maybe best AI speaker in Finland. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. And the reason is also, it's just so much information. So we need to choose our battle. Of course, relating to any of the topics, but of course, also relating to AI itself. 
finding our corner, what actually inspires us, what actually might be how our perspective could be useful for other people. Because AI, and you can find any good solution if you find that you have lost yourself for work. <clears throat> uh, maybe the last words are, Matej, this is actually an interview from this book. Matej has interviewed uh, Yuval Harari that, Yuval, should we try to resist technological developments? Because they are, of course, downsides, as I've tried to illustrate. And Harari says wisely that, First, it can't be stopped. And more relevant question than trying to uh, force the, uh, what's the fast and the development is that what we can actually do with the technology. The same te technology can be used in many different societal and political goals. And I think high, highly relevant for anyone who wants or is working with the AI is to somehow be able to articulate himself or herself that why am I actually doing this and also able to articulate to other people that why am I actually spending the hours of my own life learning this and developing this. I believe that's the way how to make the world a little bit better place. Thank you for all of the dancing stick speakers. Thank you.